Funding for this program is provided in part by Bruce Foods Corporation, makers of the complete line of Cajun King Seafood Seasoning Mixes and other distinctive Louisiana-style food products. Additional funding is provided by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Anytime, any place. In Louisiana, we're really cooking. Chef John Falls welcoming you to the bayous of South Louisiana. Today, Cajun and Creole cooking holds a prime spot in the world of international cuisine, and I would love for you to know a little bit about it. So why not sit back, relax, and join me and some of my friends as we cook up another great taste of Louisiana. Welcome to A Taste of Louisiana. I'm Chef John Falls, and today we're cooking the foods of the festivals of Louisiana. That's right, festival cooking. In all the little towns of South Louisiana, there's festivals just about every weekend, and these festivals have something to do with food, music, and I guess just a lot of good fun. So we're going to look at a lot of those in just a minute. But at the same time, I have a great friend of mine coming to visit today, Leo Honeycutt. And in addition to having his own morning show, here in Baton Rouge. Leo knows a lot about festivals. Fact is, I think he had a great honor at one festival uh, maybe just a couple months ago, and we're going to talk to Leo about his role in one of the great festivals of Louisiana. But first of all, let's talk about festivals. The Louisiana Fairs and Festivals Commission was set up in about 1934 to organize all of these great festivals in Louisiana, and I guess the theme of every one of them is les le bon temps roule, let the good times roll. People gather and I tell you, it can be for anything. If you're into food, we have the Crawfish Festival, we have the Cochon Delay Festival, Rabbit Festival, Wild Turkey, and yes, we even have a Rain Frog Festival. Natural Resource Festival, such as the Fair and Wildlife Festival, Southwest Louisiana Water Festival, and yep, the Petroleum Festival also. But one of the biggest is the Jambalaya Festival in the little town of Gonzales, Louisiana, where I guess about 100,000 people come together every year to cook jambalaya, to, I guess, grab the title of the best jambalaya cook in all of Louisiana. They have to cook over wood fires with about, oh, 40 pounds of chicken and 15 pounds of rice and any other seasonings to make sure that their dish is absolutely the best. And they can walk away from Gonzales with the title of the best jambalaya cook in all of South Louisiana. Why festivals? Well, who knows? I guess trapped in the bayous of South Louisiana in the very early days, a lot of the Cajuns decided to get together and create their own little social events. So in every little town, village, and hamlet along the bayous, yep, sure enough, some festival sprang up right out of the bayous. And we have every kind you can imagine. We've got buggy festivals, and as I say, foreign wildlife festivals, all of them having to do with people coming together to have a good time and raise a little money sometimes, whether it's uh, for a charity group or whatever but it all revolves around food, music, and having a good, good day at fun. One of the dishes that I want to do today is one that you just looked at, jambalaya. I want to talk to you about why the jambalaya festival. Well, when the Spanish arrived in Louisiana, I guess in the late 1600s, they wanted to recreate their great paella dishes, the great rice dish of the Mediterranean. When they got to New Orleans, however, they couldn't find all of the ingredients to make up their paella, so they started to create a new dish that was similar to paella, but using the products indigenous to Louisiana. And I have in front of me here a big, big paella pan, actually, that has all of the ingredients of the jambalaya. Jambalaya comes from the French word jambon, which means ham, because here is fresh ham. This is uncooked uh, ham. Uh, a la, the French word a la, which means with, and the African word for rice, yaya, jambon a la yaya, ham with rice, became jambalaya in South Louisiana. And we begin the jambalaya uh, that got its roots in paella, as I say, in, in uh, France and Italy and Spain, and we brown the pork or the fresh ham. Now, what I've done, I've taken these nice cubes of fresh pork, and I put them into the bottom of this black iron pot of the Cajuns. I'm going to kick 
this fire up real nice and high to get it sizzling. And once it comes real brown, which takes, I guess, somewhere around, oh, 15 or 20 minutes of slow cooking, we're going to add all of the seasonings. We're going to add onions, just as they did in paella cooking many years ago. We're going to add onions, celery, a lot of good fresh green vegetable seasonings. Of course, nice bell pepper, sweet bell pepper, not hot bell pepper, and garlic, a lot of nice garlic in the jambalaya, right down into the pot. And of course, the reason that you cook the meat so nice and brown is because the jambalaya must have a real, real earthy color, a nice dark color, because it's a rice dish. And once the rice is added into the pot uncooked, all of those great flavors come together to create a rice dish that's going to have a nice brown color to it. And if we didn't caramelize the meat nicely in the bottom of the black iron skillet, we just wouldn't get that nice color. So we continue to stir that around just a second to, again, caramelize all the vegetables in the bottom of the black iron pot. You can see how that's sizzling nicely there. And then I'll add the other ingredients. I'm going to add some nice smoked sausage. The Germans gave us a lot of smoked sausage in Louisiana in the late 1600s. Things like undoer, the Cajun ham inside of the casing, as well as smoked sausage. And any, any of the smoked dishes that we associate with Louisiana cooking came into the jambalaya pot from the Germans. We continue to blend them in nicely, again trying to render all that good smoke flavor down into the jambalaya pot. The Cajuns were always looking for that extra flavor. So thus, we added a lot of things into the pot to create that flavor. And that's what you see happening right here. Of course, that's not enough. A little bit more. We're going to add chicken. This is boneless breast of chicken right down into the pot. Now, at the Gonzales Jambalaya Festival, you have to use a bone-in chicken. You have to leave the bones in and have the whole chicken in the pot. But I've found that when making this dish at home, it's always better to debone the chicken because then you don't have all those bones to fight in the cooked rice when you're trying to eat the dish. So try deboning it, and you may even want to poach it off to create a nice chicken stock. So that's what I've done. Actually, I've poached off the chicken bones to make a chicken stock, which I'll add to flavor the jambalaya in just a second. OK, what's in the pot? We have some nice pork that's sauteed until it's nice and golden brown to create the color of the jambalaya. We've added onion, celery, bell pepper. We've added garlic. And that's where the great flavor of the jambalaya is going to come from. And then, of course, chicken and sausage and andouille. And I can just smell this great smoke flavor coming right out of the pot. It's absolutely incredible, the, uh, the flavor that comes out of the smoke and steam out of the jambalaya pot. Next, the color. We're going to put a little golden bell pepper. Again, this is a sweet pepper. We're going to put a little red pepper, and then fresh mushrooms, sliced mushrooms. And you can use any type of mushroom that you would like. I'm using just a regular button mushroom, but you can use the wild mushroom, the oyster mushrooms, whatever you would like. Again, a tremendous amount of ingredients into the pot. Now, once those come together, I'll add the chicken stock, because that's where the rice is going to get the water from that it needs to cook in the pot little nice chicken stock. And this is a very flavorful chicken stock. Since I'm going to cook about two cups of rice, I'm going to need about three cups of water. We're always looking for about a cup and a half of water for every cup of rice. And if you remember that formula, you will always have a perfect pot of jambalaya. Estimate the liquids in the pot, a cup and a half of liquid to a cup of rice. Now, I've got the rice all measured out here. So I'll add it right in. This is raw rice, and I'm using a long grain. Just a nice long grain rice. Mix it right in. You can see the color of the water, the chicken stock in the pot, taking on this nice brown color. Of course, you can add a little tomato to it, and you can put vegetables like black-eyed peas or anything else into it, or you can substitute the meat for seafood, fish or shrimp, whatever you would like. Anything is OK in a jambalaya. Absolutely no rules. Now, a little green onions to finish it with green onions and parsley, touch of parsley. And we'll allow this to cook over a very low fire for about 30 minutes. And then we would stir it one time, because you don't want to stir it too often. It'll get the, uh, the rice real mushy in the pot. 
So you wait just a little while and you stir it after 30 minutes and you'll allow it to steam about another 15 and you'll have a beautiful pot of jambalaya. Now, I think I already have some done over here, so I want you to see exactly what it's going to look like. Let me get this pot off of the stove. We'll let this continue to cook for later on. Get this out of the way. Okay, where's that jambalaya? I see it right here. Can you get a good look down in that pot? See how nice and pretty that jambalaya is? I'll move it right over here. And let's see if we can get a nice big spoon of this. This is served as an entree. It can be served as a side dish. However, normally speaking, it's an entree in Louisiana kitchens. Look how nice this jambalaya is. Grain for grain, the long grain rice is just beautiful in the pot. Look at here, and then we can garnish it again with a little green onions, certainly a little carrot, and a little red cabbage. We've got a real pretty jambalaya dish, originating in Louisiana as paella many, many, many years ago by the Spanish. Now, that's from the Jambalaya Festival, but I want to take you for a quick walk to the Catfish Festival in Desalimont, Louisiana. I'm going to put this right here and kick this fire up one more time. Desalman, Louisiana is a German word for the Germans. Lake Desalimont is Lake of the Germans in South Louisiana, and they have a very big catfish festival every year. So what I want to do for you now is a pan-sauteed filet of catfish from Lake Desalimont, Lake of the Germans in South Louisiana, one of the great, great festivals that, again, brings about 100,000 people into the bayous and this is a church festival. All of the proceeds actually goes to one of the little churches down there. So a great festival. If you're ever in Louisiana, try the Catfish Festival. Here we have some fillets of farm-raised catfish. This is actually a little real nice white meat of farm-raised catfish. And what I'm going to do with it is dip the catfish into a little egg wash. This is just egg and water. And then into some light lightly seasoned flour, just dust it quickly. And once that's dusted, I'm gonna add a little oil. Now you can add any type of oil you would like, but I'm gonna put just a little vegetable oil down into the saute pan. Make sure that fire is nice and hot. And while that's getting uh, hot, I'll make sure this is well dusted. You wanna shake off all of the excess flour when you're sauteing because you don't want all that extra heavy coating of flour. You want to be able to see the fish right through the flour or the breading. You can use a yellow corn flour, you can use corn meal, but when sauteing, I personally like to use plain flour best. Now I'm going to put the catfish right down into the saute pan. You can see how nice and hot that is. And I'm going to allow the fish to actually saute on one side for just about, oh, I guess two to three minutes. The secret to good fish cooking certainly is not to overcook your filet of fish. Most people have a tendency to put a piece of fish in a saute pan and allow it to just cook until it's almost like styrofoam on the inside of the pan. And when we saute, you'll notice that there's just enough oil in the pan for the bottom of the fish to sit in the oil, not covering the fish like in deep frying. So it becomes a much healthier way of cooking. So once it sautés for just a couple minutes on that side, let me see if I can flip it over with this old butter paddle. This is an old antique butter paddle that we used to stir butter with in South Louisiana. Let me see. Hey, hey, there it is. And you can see how that's nice and golden brown. And I'm going to add to it now some nice 21-25 count shrimp. These are 21-25 to the pound. And this will be the accompanying seafoods to the fish. Give it a nice shrimp flavor. And I'll saute that around for just a second. You see that flare-up comes from the steam of the fish as it's starting to, uh, of the shrimp, as it starts to come together in the pot. Now, I have to add my flavoring, so again, I'll add little onions, a little green onions, and this is a shrimp chive cream, so I'll add a few little chives. This is fresh snipped chives right in on top of the fish. And then for my sauce, well, say about a little heavy whipping cream right down into the saute pan around the fish and you see how it just comes to an instant boil because that cream that uh, saute pan is so nice and hot 
and the cream will actually pick up the flavors of the fish and the shrimp quickly sauteing down inside of this old copper skillet. The chives, of course, with the onions and green onions will instantly start to flavor the cream. Now, I'll season with a little cracked black pepper, a little salt, because we want to just put a little touch of flavor in it, a little thyme and basil, touch of thyme, little touch of basil, and then I'll put in a touch of Louisiana hot sauce, a little Louisiana pepper sauce. We want to give it that nice little spice flavor. And again, we'll stir that around. And I want to show you how nicely this dish is going to plate up, because this is really, really a nice dish. Pan sauteed filet of catfish, and this is from the Catfish Festival in De Zalimon, Louisiana. Turn that around. And I'll lower the fire. This dish is actually cooked. You can see just how quickly this dish cooked. About, oh, I'd guess three to four minutes, and we're ready to go on that dish. Look at here, I'll take out this pretty little plate that's already done. I'll take the filet of catfish, again using my old butter paddle. I'll put it right into the center of the plate like that. Then I'll take some of these nice shrimp that's been quickly sauteed, and I'll put two or three of the shrimp. You can imagine the flavor that these beautiful 21, 25 count shrimp lends to this catfish dish from Lake de Zalimon. Now, a little bit of the shrimp chive cream right down into the dish, right down into the plate. And this, of course, will keep the catfish nice and moist as we serve it. So that's the catfish dish from Lake de Zalman, Louisiana. And again, 100,000 people attending a festival in the swamplands isn't too bad. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to put this right here, and we'll sample that in just a minute. There's so many different food festivals in Louisiana, it's hard to even begin to remember them all. But one of my favorite is the Boucherie Festival. And the Boucherie Festival is very special because that is the festival that kind of honors pork in Louisiana, and pork was one of the original ingredients that the Cajuns had to work with. So what I have here is a nice bowl of all of the ingredients that's prepared at the Boucherie or Cochon de Lay Festival in Louisiana. We have right here hogshead cheese, and you may know this as Scrapple up in the Pennsylvania area. We have the white boudin uh, blanc, the white sausage of ground pork with all the seasonings and rice into the casing. Of course, andouille and smoked, uh, smoked sausage, some of the dishes are some of the ingredients I was using just a minute ago. Tasso, that nice spiced ham right into the dish. And of course, gratin. This is the crackling that, that's uh, the, almost the remnants of lard when it's rendered from pork fat. So all of these ingredients are put together at the Cochon de Lay or Boucherie Festival. And one of the things that I like from that festival is, in fact, griots, which is a dish that we see a lot of in Louisiana. And I want to show you what griots look like because this dish is normally served at all of the great restaurants of New Orleans for brunch on Sunday. These are little pork cutlets, pan sauteed quickly in a nice brown gravy with mushrooms and green onions. Look how pretty those griots are. But one thing about them, they're always served alongside a nice spoonful of steamed grits, griots and grits in South Louisiana. So I'll put a nice spoon of the grits right alongside the griots like that. And then I'll just put a little touch of the sauce, this nice mushroom and onion and garlic sauce right on top of the grits, just like that. What a nice dish that comes out again of another festival in Louisiana, the Boucherie or Cochon de Lay Festival. We'll add a little green to it, and we'll save that for a nice brunch dish after a while. Put this right out of the way. Great foods from great festivals in South Louisiana. Well. I promised that I'd bring out a friend of mine just a minute ago, and that guy is Leo Honeycutt. Someone was telling me that he was actually made grand moron of the Shemp Festival in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Is that supposed to be, uh, is, is that a compliment or what, the, the grand moron of the <laughs> Shemp Festival? <laughs> well, shoot, yeah. It's a, call, it's a compliment. Hey, John, how you doing? How you doing? Great. Cool. Thank you so much for stopping by and visiting with us. You're thanking me with hey, all this food here? The Shemp Festival. I see you have the crown of this. This is my crown. That's right. But I brought you a whole lot of other hats because you're talking about festivals today, and I just want to kind of go through some of these like we had 
looked before, you see you got the Sunshine Festival where Donaldson you're from. Donaldson 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 That's my hometown. That's right, the Sunshine yeah, Festival. Yeah, we got the Shrimp and Petroleum Festival down hey, in Morgan City. That's another one. We've got the St. Elizabeth Harvest Festival. You see the sugar cane I in there. I see the cane right and there. I know how you like to, to cook with that sugar cane. Oh, I do. I use sugar all the time. That's right. You're just talking about the Jambalaya yeah. capital of the world down there at Gonzales. Got that hat on. Uh, um, was one of the um, judges down there, I guess about three or four years ago. And the thing about that, you have such a press of people there because, as you were saying, about 100,000 people show up for this. The jambalaya is incredible, but when you have to judge it, I mean, how incredible can it be? How, how and you many, have this people? press of people that are all around you, and we're talking about real close to you, <laughs> wondering how you're going to judge this stuff, so you get kind of nervous. How many cooks? How many cooks are sitting oh, there that you have to judge? About a dozen, oh, 15, geez. 20, you know, and they're all very good. All good. And we got the Sorrento Boucherie uh, Festival. We, ju we just did the foods of the Boucherie Festival. Just did that. The fourth annual Wild Beast Feast. We got a lot of that here in Baton Rouge. Is, is that criteria for a festival? Everyone's got to print a hat? No, these are just the hats that I got. <laughs> these are just the hats that I have. And of course, down at Lab de Ville, the Cajun Country Fest, uh -huh. and the Allons Manger down ah, in Rose. Hey, this, this is one of my favorite, too, right here, old Father Bayou, yeah. the Great Church Festival. Yeah, now that I'll, is I'll a, keep this that, one. That's huh? a press of people, too. <laughs> and the uh, Natchez Balloon Festival, where they just have a lot of hot air. Now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as I am concerned, uh, you know, I am the, the reigning Grand Moron of the Shrimp Festival down there in Donaldson. Uh, How did the in town Donaldsonville, of Donaldsonville honor Shrimp? He's one of the three students. Well, How did a Louisiana festival get named after Shrimp? Man, don't, don't ask me. <laughs> I mean, the, the guys down there in the fire department of all place, uh, places really like Shrimp, and there's a couple people there that think that Shrimp is just an unsung hero. Of the original, uh, you know, the original Three Stooges, and he was one of the original Three Stooges, and there was kind of a falling out, you know, and I guess he just went, <laughs> just kind of got out of the way and went, and that's all I had to do, and and that's that's really how well, I got we into it. We definitely want to keep this one. We want to keep this hat. Now I want to continue to talk about festivals, but I want to cook a little bit too. We're uh -huh. gonna we're gonna talk about a festival that has a lot to do with. Desserts and sweet things and nice, wonderful things, and that is. It's getting kind of hot hey, in this kitchen. You mind hey, if I hey, do this? You, you know the old saying: if you hey. can't stand the heat, get right? out of the kitchen. But I wouldn't <laughs> leave your kitchen on. for all the money in the world. The the uh, uh, strawberry festival in mm -hmm. Ponchatoula, Louisiana, every year um, uh, just makes all kind of great desserts and cooks all kind of things with uh, strawberries. So I'm going to ask you to help me to do uh, uh, just Dangerous. a little strawberry. Oh, I'm going to have to work? Absolutely. You're not going to come in and eat without a little work. But okay. let me, let me well, ask you one worth good question. What? Why are so many festivals in South Louisiana? We have over 157 recorded festivals with the fairs and festivals. Uh, why so many? Why only in South Louisiana? It beats me, John. I'm really not sure. I know that when I came from North Louisiana down here, and for people that aren't familiar with the kind of the dichotomy in the Louisianas, there's almost a Mason-Dixon line in Louisiana. North Louisiana doesn't do nearly as many festivals as South Louisiana does, but South Louisiana, I think you had it kind of earlier in the show. It's just because everybody was back in the bayous and kind of cut off from the rest of the world and decided that they were just going to have to do their own entertainment. And there is one thing about this place, they love to party, huh? Are we, are and, we and, right or what? And, I mean, and, this is the original Mardi Gras place, absolutely. right? Absolutely, and good food. Good food, oh. good music, good times all go together. So I guess that's the answer. And, to it amazes me. I've eaten in restaurants, the nicer restaurants, all over the country. <laughs> and I think that Lafitte's Landing in Donaldsonville has to be among the top ten in the whole world. And, and I don't I, just say that just I because you're standing here. Well, yeah. actually, I am. But no, no, really. <laughs> It really is. I mean, we're talking about some, I don't understand where you come up with these concoctions, but they are incredible. I steal recipes. I go around. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> so, let me tell right. you, we're going to do a little bit of a strawberry dessert, very simple dessert. Lots of blueberries. I'm going to let you take in the country. this. I'm going to let you put a little wild strawberry liqueur right on top of it <laughs> okay. while I reach down and How much get, you put in here? Just uh, hey, you're the cook. You go ahead and do whatever you want there. Okay, I'm going to put baby. into this nice bowl of Heavy cream while you're stirring that up. Yeah. I'm going to put a little the crew's sugar. going to love this. A little cinnamon. Mm -hmm. A little touch of nutmeg. We're making a little English cream here. And of course, some nice chopped berries. But there's a secret to this recipe, and that is <sighs> what a uh, kick. fresh strawberry wine. This is strawberry Did wine. Like Smell that. No, but this came to me mm. from a good old friend of mine. Those Jessel Shecks over in French Settlement. You know where French Settlement is? Huh? I know where it is. French now look, Settlement, sure. I've got this little. Jessel Shecks, huh? Jessel Shecks. You ever heard of that good Cajun name? Hey, now I a little whipper. Now a little whipper right down into here. 
and I'm going to whip all of this around. While this is whipping, let me ask you one other question. Okay. Is there as many festivals in North Louisiana? We're not going to hold anything against you since you're from North Louisiana. We'll allow <laughs> well, you to you, say John. it. Thank you, John. But is there as many festivals in North Louisiana no. as South Louisiana? No, 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 I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. The South Louisiana people know how to have a good time and know how to eat very well. You know, so like I was saying, I'm just amazed at the amount of dishes and the amount of different ways that people can parlay almost anything around here into a dish. Right. It's just, it's just incredible. And then to develop festivals around it, Everybody just likes to have a good time. It may have just been a gimmick of ours to get out of the house on the weekend. I think you're right. <laughs> now, I've whipped strawberries and cinnamon and nutmeg and a little strawberry wine into this nice cream, and you've marinated the berries yes. in a little wild strawberry liqueur, and this is one of the dishes we've concocted over here in the bayous of South Louisiana, and I don't whip the cream to the whipped cream state. I whip it just until Ooh. it gets that nice, uh, heavy, heavy look to it, almost like an English cream, almost like the cook vanilla oh, cream. Man. So I'll put it I can just right. tell from the, you know, it's too bad we don't have smell of vision uh -huh. because you can really. Let's pour uh. this right into here like that, and I'll let this sit for just a second. Why don't you stir that up right in there and mix it up nicely. Oh. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming and cook with us and bringing you your crown from the uh, <laughs> Shemp Festival. It's well, uh, it's always great to see you. I appreciate it. And I want to tell everybody out here to make sure you come back and visit us next time as we continue to cook up more great Louisiana festival foods and all kind of good taste of Louisiana. See you next time. Let's go ahead and get some of Funding for this program was provided in part by Bruce Foods Corporation, makers of Bruce's yams and other distinctive Louisiana-style food products. Additional funding is provided by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Anytime, any place in Louisiana, we're really cooking. The companion cookbook to A Taste of Louisiana is available for $22.95. The Evolution of Cajun and Creole Cuisine by Chef John Fulce features recipes and food history behind Louisiana's cuisine. This 352-page cookbook contains over 250 recipes, including those from this show. To order, call 1-800-973-7246 or write to the address on your screen.